Your responsibilities as a professional, they begin today. As you begin your life as a medical student, learning to become a physician at Loma Linda. Laura Hansen. Healthcare runs deep in my family. My dad is a dentist, my mother is a nurse, both of my grandmas are nurses, my grandpa is a doctor, one of my aunts is a nurse, my sister is a nurse, and one of my cousins is a nurse. So there's, there's quite a long line in the family. I mean, it's shown me the impact that healthcare has on people's lives and you know how much of a difference you can make by being a healthcare professional. And so I think that's what really pushed me in that direction from a young age. The physicians of at Loma University School of Medicine. Before God, these things I do promise. First year is all about getting the basic knowledge of how the body is supposed to work and it's laying the foundation for learning about all of the pathology which is all like the diseased states that the body can be in the second year. Okay, okay what I want to do first of all is orient you, uh, just generally orient you to the posture abdominal wall and we're going to be looking at two things, the posture abdominal wall classically and then also the kidney and the uh, urinary structure we talked about. So just to orient, I think you all know that this is the kidney that we see right here. You can see a little bit, you can actually feel it because the atherosclerotic plaques is a little crunching, but there's your aorta that you have in that area there for orientation. How's it coming over there? So she still had a face at that point, and then they're like, okay, now dissect the superficial face, and that I think was the hardest dissection just because you're literally cutting another person's face and that just didn't go with me very well. But this is definitely like, wow, this is a human, this is what I look like inside. And sometimes it's easy to forget that. Like, you come to lab, you're like, okay, this is, you know, let's find the structure, let's get out of here. But when you actually stop and think, like, that would be right here on me, or that would be right here on me, you know? Um, then it, it can get kind of cool to realize that. And the question I'm going to ask for question number three is, what are the situations in which miliary TB occurs? Miliary TB. Talk that over with your group. First year is basically how a human body is before sin, and <laughs> are supposed to be, and second year is mainly what happened after sin. Group 21, Sylvester. Okay, well, miliary TB happens in immunocompromised people. All right. Is that right? Yeah, give me, give me some examples. Second year teaches you how to think like a doctor. First year tells you what's normal, second year tells you what's abnormal, and what to do about it. The tip of the left second digit, which is now... Supposed to lay right on top of each other. If you're doing it like perfectly, which apparently looks like that's what I'm doing. It's an absolute perfect stitch. He's so humble. You know, that was one of the reasons why I married him, because of his humility. <laughs> Third year is about going through different specialties of medicine, whether you like it or not, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Because even if you're not in clinic or at the hospital, then you should be studying. And if you're not studying, then you need to be sleeping. And it's really great that we're doing it together, we understand each other, but it can sometimes cause us to be competitive with ourselves. A lot of my friends who are married, but who their wife um, or husband is not in medical school, I mean, when they decide to stop studying, their wife is waiting for them to, for them to spend time with each other. But for us, if I stop studying and, you know, and she's still studying, like, I can't necessarily tell her to stop studying too. We have to work really hard to spend free time with each other. In one way, it's been difficult to transition from second year to third year. Every new rotation, every new attending brings its different challenges. You don't always know what to expect. I'm getting tired of doing this. What would you like to do? Sleep. <laughs> Hi, Leilani. Hi. Hi. My name is Lindsay Bautista. I'm one of the fourth year medical students working in the ER today. 
How's she doing today? She looks very active. <laughs> she is. <laughs> yeah. Fourth year is medical school's way of saying no hard feelings. <laughs> like, and several people have said this will be the best year of your life. So I'm looking forward to that. And I've felt that some. The stress is not the same. I mean, we stress for interviews, and, and that is stressful, I'm not going to lie, but it's a different kind of stress. I get so nervous that I forgot something. I know. Thanks. Bye. Fourth year's supposed to be downtime, but we haven't had any, so I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do next year with three kids. I would say we come here pretty much every day and we walk in the neighborhood, um, usually after dark when I get home. All right, you ready, Asher? Yeah. Let's do it. I, I feel like I've made decisions through medical school and then choosing a specialty that have given me the best chance in medicine to have a successful family life. It's a field, I think, where there's a lot of burnout, a lot of, a lot of stress, a lot of wondering, whoops, where did my life go? Where did my kids go? Whoa, he's 18? And I've just been doing surgery. And so I'm trying to hopefully make decisions that'll that'll not sacrifice the family and not sacrifice myself as a person. You know, I want to be an effective person who can engage with patients. We're having to apply more places, to interview more places. And there's always that fear, like, what if I've worked this hard and I don't get to be what I want to be? That's scary. You go through medical school, you do as, as well as you can. Um, but depending on how you do, that sort of determines what kind of, what kind of doctor you can become. For most classes, a passing is a 65%. Two of our classes passing is a 68%. It's not uncommon to fail a test. Pretty much every third or fourth year that I've talked to say that you, you fail tests. It's just the way that medical school works. So all of these are different parts of the brain stem that we have to know. Uh, we have 21 questions in 30 minutes. So what he'll do is he'll have a little arrow and he'll point to like here and he'll say, okay, if you had a lesion at this location, what would be the symptoms? And so you have to know what it is and what it does. It's amazing. You learn new stuff about the body every day that you're like, you know, wow, that, that's awesome how that works. And, I, and sometimes you're like, I can even believe that I'm alive right now. Basically the way that medical school works is you put a semester into five weeks, and then you take finals for that semester in five weeks. That's medical school right there for you. I gotta learn this material, and then in two years I'm gonna be able to actually use it. Any detail from any one of the three or 400 pages of notes that you have for each test week is fair game. It's like standing below a skyscraper and someone's looking at one of the, the higher windows and say, hey, I'm going to toss you something. You're going to catch it. And you're like, okay. So you kind of prepare yourself to catch something. And they throw something out and you see it and it gets bigger and bigger and all of a sudden you realize they threw out a cow and you're supposed to catch it. And you just... You just kind of put your head under like your sink faucet and uh, you never turn it off. And you know, that's the thing like with med school, like, it's not that it's like terrible, like, like you can't do it, but it just doesn't stop. I go to class, I go to lab, I go home, I study, and I sleep. That's about my life. <laughs> to the first years, I'm gonna be like, this is really tough, and they're gonna tell you it's harder next year, and there is more information, but you can definitely do it. Like, you find you have another gear that you didn't even think you had. You know, sometimes when I pray and I'm really overwhelmed, you know, I'll have a peace that comes over me as I'm praying that, you know, I'm here for a reason, and, I can do this. And you know, I, I truly believe that God speaks through other humans to us. And I think that a lot of times he speaks through my mother. <laughs> she is constantly reminding me, you know, that I can do it. You know, you wouldn't be here 
if it wasn't for a reason. And then it may extend out to involve the trigeminal nerve. Definitely not feeling the cell love today. But that's okay. It's still a week to the test. Still have time to learn it. So. I would definitely compare medical school to a marathon. Uh, you cannot see the finish line. <laughs> uh, but you still have to keep going. You just have to have that vision in your mind. When I run long distance races, I just focus on the next, next mile instead of the next nine, 10 miles. It's still a long ways the third year, but that's something that I don't want to think about right now. We had a scary practice test on Friday, last Friday, and half the class failed as far as I know including me. <laughs> Just walked in, and, eh, I can manage this. And no, it didn't work out. Never worried about passing an undergrad, but in med school you do sometimes. <laughs> and then we studied our behind off uh, the whole weekend. And it really paid off. <laughs> Everybody did super great after that practice test. <laughs> I used to be very innocent. Last year, <laughs> used to uh, look at the second years who are studying so hard, day in and day out, and be like, "Hey, I don't have to do that." And as soon as I came back from Christmas break, the reality that you're not too far away from that big test just hit me. Uh, yeah, step one is coming up in about uh, I want to say five months. If somebody was writing a board question and somebody thought something was important enough to put in a black box warning, maybe you should take a look at it. So that's why I provided these for you. Step one is the first uh, licensing exam out of three. And the most important, if you ask any medical student, because that determines where you are going to go as a resident, what specialty you're going to pick. And as much as MCAT, the entrance exam to get into med school was important, step one is important for the next phase of your career. Of the following, 5FC is most notable for causing... QT. Yeah. It's three. Enter your answers in. Five, four, three, two, one. They will ask anything from the first two years of medical school, which is a lot. I studied this, uh, I think two weeks ago, um, reviewing for step one, and man, when I'm going through it again, I forgot half the drugs. Pretty much all third years and all fourth years are like, you know, just get through second year, pass your boards, and then, you know, it gets so much better. So that's really like what we all look forward to. It's just the most studying you could ever possibly imagine. And then when you feel like you can't take the studying anymore, then they give you more. You know, second year, the only thing that kind of kept me going was that fact I knew that third year should be better. And so I, I kind of use that as my goal. Today's Monday, I'm taking my test next Friday, so about uh, less than two weeks. Kind of exciting, this is the last 10 days of second year. In college, you typically didn't take more than three science classes at a time. Here, you're taking six or seven, so you're taking over a semester's load, or so like 21 hours of pure science classes, and you're learning all the material and a much more accelerated pace than you would in college. Uh, I, I'm really nervous. I don't know why. We got food, water. Hope I'm not forgetting anything. I'm gonna be done in a few hours. That's what I kept telling myself yesterday. As uh, hard and rough it's gonna be, I'm gonna be done at the end of the day. It's a huge difference in between how you study in college and how you study in medical school. In college, it's all about getting everything, and here it's all about getting the main facts. And so it takes a complete reversal of your study habits and of your approach to studying 
to be successful. And so you need it both to tell the cerebellum where you are in space and for the cerebellum to fix you where you are in space. Uh, okay. So if you can't do either, you're just stuck. I expect today's test to be a little harder than the practice test. It's going to be much longer. The longest test we take in med school is uh, three hours. And to take a test for seven hours, at some point while you're taking the test, the physical and the mental kind of blur. Because um, you're mentally stressed and you can physically feel it. <laughs> I'm not going to look at the notes anymore. It's time. It is time. The time has come. I truly believe that God wants me here. And I think that's a way that I cope with the enormous unknowns that are in my future. Each day in medical school, the knowledge that I learn influences the doors that will be open to me in a few years when I'm trying to get into residencies and to even what residencies, you know, I, I'll even have a shot at. And so I have to remember each day that God has a plan for me. He wants me in a specific place and it's gonna work out for his will. It's over. Third year now. That's right. Oh, well, I'm assuming I passed. <laughs> and that was brutal. I don't feel like I'm done. I, the adrenaline is still <laughs> rushing. <laughs> I think it'll take Sabbath and a few more days to calm down and actually start realizing that I'm done with second year. <laughs> Second year taught me that I am more resilient than I thought. That I can actually withstand tons of exams and tests. And I can actually take that much stress. And I, I hope when I actually face some difficult times in real life, I hope um, I will do what I did in second year. That I will go to God I'll go to my friends, my family, and just be disciplined in what I'm doing. That's what second year taught me. Kelly's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you have lots of family and friends out there. Yeah. That's nice. You should start feeling your legs get real warm. Let's grow. Okay. You know, you have the doctor that's cutting, and you have the the resident who's also a doctor that's there, you know, also cutting, and then it's you. But you're just there. You're not necessarily cutting, you know, the the body open. Skin. Skin. Okay, so I'm basically going to student lounge uh, to see, uh, check my student mailbox to see how, how I scored on uh, my surgery grades. So may like it, may not like it, but, you know, what can I do? One thing I was happy with uh, during my eval where my attending was talking to me is that, you know, he asked me what I wanted to go into and I told him orthopedics and usually a lot of general surgeons kind of tend to not like when students say that because it's so different from general surgery. So, you know, so I said, and I hope that you can still look at me after I said that, you know, he's like, no, no, no. He's like, I mean, I know that general surgery is not for everybody. You know, my, what's important is that you, uh, you know, find what you love to do. Another attending at, at Arrowhead that I said that I wanted to go into orthopedics to, he just looked at me and walked away. <laughs> so I was like, well. Okay, that's good. And we're gonna go over to the other side and we're gonna do the same thing. Sure. No, you're not in a hurry, so you can take your time and fix any other bleeders that are occurring. When I initially came into med school, I wanted to do peds. And when I did OB, the chief resident was like, all right, who wants to go into a C-section? I wanted to raise my hand so quickly, but I was like, okay, just act calm. Looked around to the side. I was like, no one's raising their hand, me! And so I got to go in, and then it was just awesome. Even starting third year and starting my surgery rotation, that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a general surgeon. It wasn't until I actually did general surgery that I realized, well, I don't like all the aspects of what general surgeons do. And so I said, well, I know I want to be a surgeon, but I got to figure out what I want to cut on. You know, that's important. 
And so after doing my one week of orthopedic surgery, I was like, man, this is amazing. I love orthopedics. And I like the fact that I can use a hammer and a drill and, and people are better after I do it, you know? Like people can actually walk and they're happy, you know? And I loved it. Honestly, like I haven't done anything else so far third year that really I, w I enjoy doing. Like I'll wake up every morning and say, man, I'm really glad to put on my white coat and go in. <laughs> like all the other stuff is kind of like I'm just going through the motions, but this I really enjoy. A lot of people don't, don't like the lifestyle that, that surgeons have to live, but they love the surgeries. And I think that's what gets, you know, people like, I don't think I'm necessarily someone who likes to be away from, from my wife and who like, you know, likes to be, you know, gone all day. But like, if I got to think of something that I'm waking up every morning to do, it's got to be operating. A lot of the guys who are sometimes at the top of their fields in medicine, uh, they're revered and they're, you know, respected, but oftentimes their families, are kind of, um, yeah, they don't know their families that well. And, you know, I had those ambitions to be that, that, that guy, but I also know that, like, there's no need to get married and, you know, like, throw my wife and my kids on the wayside. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> we know what it is. Okay, we've got a boy. 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 Okay. All right, Brittany, you're gonna hold the baby up for mama. Okay. okay you're gonna hold the baby. Kind of hold the head down, though. Don't hold the head. Don't hold the head. All right, we're gonna show you your baby. Looks like what you said. Beautiful baby. Okay, now hold the head down. Bring the baby over there. to the nurses, so I'm like, you know, being very careful, you know, tiptoeing. The mom went through so much pain to get this baby into the world, and I don't want to be the crazy 30 year medical student that drops her baby. She didn't know if she was having a boy or a girl, so it's actually nice to, you know, see the, when they pulled the baby's legs out, you could see it's a boy. Oh, so cute. She was crying, and I was like trying to hold back my tears. It's very rewarding to deliver babies and make women happy. I know I would be happy doing it. Whether it's attainable is a whole other question because a lot of people like orthopedics, the field of orthopedics, and there are a lot of smart medical students out there. Yeah, it's not bad. Pretty happy with my grade, but I think I'll only be happy in the end once I see what everyone else got, so I can see like whether that means I did better than them or not. That's a problem. Like you have to. It's not just your grade, but it's uh, how you're compared to your classmates. So see how that goes. You didn't give me the highest, highest rating that you possibly could, but I got right under that. And so for someone that wants to go into surgery, that's important. Sometimes they won't even look at your application if it's below a certain score. Um, and so it, like, it can be kind of stressful, but in all that, I realized in the end that it was God that got me into Loma Linda. And so in the same way, I'm doing all that I can, but I'm trying not to think that it'll be all about what I do that gets me into the residency that I need to be at. I know it's gonna be God, but I have to remind myself of that every day. Fourth year is about getting a job. I think it's supposed to be a little bit more stress-free, um, but I'm not really finding that to be the case because of interviews and residency. And the closer we get to graduation, the more I feel like, wow, I'm gonna be a doctor. I'm gonna be responsible for you know important decisions um, come July. I think he's very cute when he warms up to you. He's a little bit tentative right now. Sure. I'm gonna make this kid like me. <laughs> hello. <gasps> hi. hi, Ethan. How are you? Can you shake hands? Can you shake hands? <gasps> hi. Can you give her knuckles? Good job. Do we do knuckles? Knuckles. All right. First and second year is not about what being a doctor is like, you know? Your interaction is with books and not humans, and that's hard. Especially when you dream of being a doctor so long and you get to medical school and it's, it's not what you've dreamt about. And so having this third and fourth year experience is made up for that. And any, any drainage that you've noticed, thank you. No, not out of his ear. Thank you. I'll take you home. <laughs> this is why we entered medical school, like to see patients. Fourth year is about 
taking everything that you've learned and applying it, being a little more confident in it, and showing what you've learned to all these programs that you interview at. It's selling yourself. It's convincing them, and I think convincing yourself that you're ready to take the next step to be a doctor. How are you getting from the airport to the... Okay. And what time does that one depart at? It's not as much of an influx of all the knowledge that you've had first year, second year, third year. It's just letting that knowledge simmer. It's, it's letting the gravy thicken. I'm driving to Minneapolis. On to my next destination, Boston, by early morning. It's 12.37 a.m. I have an interview at Indiana University Children's Hospital tomorrow morning. So one of the things that I'm really looking for uh, besides a solid residency training program is that I'm trying to find a place that's very livable for my family. So I want Asher and Micah and the new little one on the way to grow up with as much exposure to nature as they possibly can. Means it's only 9.37 in California. Which means I'm not tired and I can't go to sleep. I got interviewed at um, Mayo Clinic at Dartmouth. First, Kansas City, Missouri. Salt Lake City, Utah. Oakland, California. At Duke. Then OHSU in Oregon, Portland. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Loma Linda, California. Seattle, Washington. Then Loma Linda. Then I interviewed at a family medicine program in Grand Junction, Colorado. Indianapolis, Indiana. Aurora, Colorado. Then the University of Colorado in Denver, and then I ended at Harvard in Boston. And then LA Children's in Phoenix. I think it'd be really hurt if I didn't get into Loma Linda. I've shown that I can grow a lot and I work well with the residents that are here, and I think it has a lot to do with your gut feeling, like where you end up. And I have a really good, good gut feeling about Loma Linda. I've got some love letters from a couple program directors, which is kind of nice, you know, it's nice to be wanted. Um, from University of Colorado, Mayo, and Duke. They had the program directors sent me these nice long emails that said, hey, look, if you want to come here, um, we would love to have you, and we've got a spot for you. Today is match day. I feel confident about next year, one, because I've matched, and I know that I'm going someplace. And I think I have a really good shot at Loma Linda, and if I go someplace else, then I'll know it's really because that's where God wanted me to go. So, to me it's just more of a celebration day, but I know a lot of people are really nervous. So, I don't know, we'll see. So we find out where we go today, hopefully there's no big surprises. <laughs> We're expecting to go to Mayo. That's kind of what we've been planning for, but we'll see. Okay, Dr. Hadley. So you want to say the first name? And then I will say the first name. Is there any prize for the first name? Jillian Oft. Laura Denham. Kimberly McMillan. The next name is Mark Warren. I 
feel like medicine in general is a giant socialization process. You come into medicine and you're not a doctor and, and you're very well aware of that fact. And then the subsequent years help you to realize slowly but surely that you are going to be a physician and then that you can be a physician and then finally that you are a physician. By this stage I, I do feel comfortable going into a room even though I may not know everything I'm supposed to do, I may not know what the diagnosis is. I feel comfortable at least plunging in, asking the questions I need to ask, performing a competent physical exam. And so it's just nice to feel the comfort of knowing that you can do a decent job at it and knowing that people will guide you, still guide you. You know, there's still a comfort in knowing that there's someone to help you out. What's the emergency medical condition she has? Uncontrolled pain. You can ride this stretch by yourself for quite a while. He was just always on his bike, you know? So he was on his training wheels, but he'd be out on his bike every day, so we just kind of loosened him and worked the training wheels up, up, up to where he had to use more and more of his own balance. And then one day Brittany's like, hey, maybe you can do it without him. So we took him off and sure enough. And I think that's like medicine. You know, you have these training wheels, you have this structure, the support system, all these attendings and, and people around you building you into a physician. And slowly, you know, through second, third, fourth year, they're raising them up so that you're having to lean and, and develop your own balance more and more. And eventually the training wheels are gonna come off. And, and it, it's the hope that we won't crash and burn. You ready to go again? Okay. For many people in college, it was the brains that got them through, but in medical school, it's the determination that gets you through. It is very much a trying in the fire. I just hope I come out gold and don't get burned in the process. <laughs> it is just a great feeling. Got the step one score, I passed, so you're officially a third year and you have something to offer, believe it or not. I've already had instances where people are just grateful that you listen to them. No Advent is, institution is perfect. This is still God's school, and I still believe that God is blessing this institution. And if I had to redo med school 10 times over, I'd come, I'd come here again, because I've really enjoyed my experiences. You made it through the puddle? Good job. Like, we're gonna walk across that platform, and we're still gonna have the training wheels on. Ashers are off, mine aren't yet. But they're pretty high. Pretty, I'm leaning. Mark. Brandon Warren. I think it's probably one of the biggest accomplishments that I'll have in life that I can mark out and say, here. I'm hoping that there'll be more later where I can look back, but I have a feeling that as far as tangible, concrete things, this is definitely one of the biggest. Lindsay Nicole Bautista. Lindsay. Yeah. Lindsay. Okay, you're ready to start. Here's your packet. Okay. Here's your pager. All right. And then white coats. That's what makes you feel like a doctor. Your coat length. You can ask any medical student, especially the tall ones. From medical school, and a coat that came to about here. My long white coat. That's what I want. And now, it's longer. <laughs>